The world we have is a product of our way of thinking, or so said one Albert Einstein. But surely the planet we inhabit means different things to different people, often evoking completely disparate ideas, ideologies, concepts and trains of thought. But that's not to say these subjects be kept apart at all times, as is the case today at the University of Central Lancashire where we gather with artists, intellectuals and academics to discuss the relationship between two of the most provocative of these ideas and subjects, science and art. Key to this discussion has been the dangers of some of the hidden impacts made by man on the planet and key speaker, artist Jack Scott, whose 16 month residency right here at the university has culminated in this, the beautiful Dystopias exhibition. I wanted to have a residency that I directly worked with scientists and so I was able to debate and discuss different different issues with them because what I have learned is that although um, there are a lot of uh, theories um, put forward by scientists that it's actually sometimes they change and sometimes their their answers to, to questions change and I'm really fascinated by that. Hidden dangers we decided on that for a title for the seminar because Really, the whole undercurrent of what I've been doing here at the university is about the hidden impacts that we actually make on the planet. So we kind of wanted the, this kind of um, dynamic energy around the word art and science, hidden dangers. Part of this um, seminar series has used the term hidden dangers. And what I've been doing is explaining to people or showing people how nominally fairly um, ordinary uh, materials can actually harbour some quite interesting and diverse microorganisms. And this can range from jet fuel to bathroom tiles. The, the range is, is, is really quite extraordinary. I look at the, the art-science relationship as a one of not of a dualistic oppositions, is one of actually complementarity, so that both art and science are required if we're, our understanding of nature, reality, our place in the world comes from art and science. I would also add in, it also comes from religion and spirituality. I like the emotions that art can generate in me, all forms of art, drama, uh, music, painting. It's an emotional perceptive and that emotional perception and that emotional appreciation is there whether you're a scientist or not. I really enjoy that art and science is very different but we're both excited about finding out about the world. That's where our passion is and so we're all seeking this this kind of inner and outer knowledge about the world so that's where the kind of confluence is but apart from that the way we get there is so different and i love that i think that that's really really fascinating When you're creating a piece of science, there are certain, there are certain rules, certain um, ideas that, uh, 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 that you adhere to. So creating a piece of science in that respect isn't all that different from creating a piece of art. You need the inspiration, you, you, you need the drive, you need the enthusiasm, and you need the perception. You've got to be able to think outside the box. This may seem to be much more obvious in the in the arts, but I don't think it is. I mean, you've got to be uh, you've got to be pretty perceptive as well if you're going to survive in the world of science. 
scientists have a kind of freedom. They, they want a kind of freedom to explore, and, and obviously artists do as well. So it's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's kind of a chemistry that's kind of there, and sometimes it doesn't work, and sometimes it does.